edition of the Dawson and Denise show. I'm Denise. I'm your boy Dawson. And we're here with our weekly review. First up, Preacher's Daughter. Preacher's Daughter, yes. Lifetime has given us everything on Wednesday nights. Two of our shows that keep us bringing these the reviews loop. back to back and in the loop. Uh, Preacher's Daughter, starting out with that. Uh, tonight's episode was really good. Loose. Loose. <laughs> Loose. Completely loose. Let me, ah. let me high, loose, <laughs> open, out, everything. So let's get started with, uh, we always start out with the Southern Belle Ready to Raise Hell, Megan. <sighs> Megan. That's when that, the drug test came back positive. I feel like, say something, I'm giving up on you. That's what I feel when it comes to Megan. Her dad was so hurt. Her dad is like, I'm giving up on you. It's like... And for this to be your second child, that would have you questioning your parenting skills. You have parents that are out here doing everything right, and their child is not taking drugs, and you still question yourself. So for both of your kids to turn to drugs, you might might have to want to step from behind that pulpit and, and take care of your family. Take care of your family. Yeah, because it's like if you had a son went down the same road and then make it, and not say you can always blame the family. But at some point, you got to, like, she did go into church and talk to the dad and say, hey, we went the same thing with her brother, now we're dealing with this because her drug test did come back positive. You know, where are we going wrong? What steps we need to take as parents, you know, to really rectify this issue? Because Megan is just, like, she's going at it hard. And and she I, oh, my gosh. I, I, we have young, somewhere. Right? She's young. She's young. She don't need to be doing drugs. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs no, to. No, nobody needs to be smoking. Exactly, but her parents are very sincere. They lied to the parents. It hurts for your child. I know we all do it. We all did it. We're teenagers. We were teenagers. I'm still yeah. a teenager. But we've all lied to our parents, but to now have a teenage daughter, it will hurt me to my heart if she lied to me in my face and exactly. still went ahead and took the test and still didn't say, okay, 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 I come clean. Yeah. Still went to take the test and wait for me to get the results for me to look like a fool. I know. And when dad, you could have stopped me a long time ago. Yeah, and dad's like, Megan, we gotta make some changes and talking to her and stuff. And I really hope she pulls through. You know, this 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 episode we saw them kind of, you know, giving heart to heart, saying, you know, we gotta have a change. And hopefully it does come through for Megan because I mean you got two parents that love you, that care for you. And that's usually how it is with people who are out there, you know, on they have people who mm -hmm. care for them, but some people Try that one pill, get on that power, mm -hmm. get on that, and then and they spend the rest of their life looking for the next high. Next high, exactly, exactly. And then next high, you see. <clears throat> exactly. Well, be careful. Be careful. So we're going to go on to uh, someone who's a mild case, uh, Kobe. Kobe's sister kind of reminds me of me. And uh, when I had my little kind of thing with the church, like, you know, let me do the whole church thing on my own. Don't mm -hmm. rush me into it. But she's talking about her child. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm upset with you guys because you well, took my you child. Said, the time you did like a theatrical thing. No, no, uh, no. but she uh performed in all the church plays. Huh? Yeah, I did do all that. I was there. I did all that kind of stuff too. But you can go back a couple of years to one of our episodes, and you'll see him <laughs> doing the <laughs> President Obama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in our video. It was yeah. good though. It was, it was good. Yeah. I can't take that from you. Yeah, it was good. So I used to do all that kind of stuff in church performance. So, but then it comes a time when people get. I think I just. People get kind of like churched out. Is, is that's just the word I'm going to use? And it, they're just tired of the the routine. Out. Don't know what to do. <laughs> Take them to the king. They're just tired of it. And I think Megan's sister is. I'm not sorry. Uh, Kobe's sister is there, and Kobe doesn't understand. You know that her sister is kind of like, look, I need a break. And Kobe's upset because sister didn't come to her uh, performance. And her sister was like, oh, okay. Pretty much. Pretty much. And Kobe is, she just really wants to know why. But I, you know, and I was thinking too, out of all the girls in this uh, this show, I could really see Kobe like really advancing and doing something like either in fashion, maybe doing acting. She just has like that. I mean, she's I young now, but I see. Her sister should have came because Kobe is underage. Yeah. 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 You know, she had to go with whatever her mom told her. The mom took the granddaughter to church. She couldn't go against her mom. That's her mom. Exactly. So she still should have came to support her sister, especially when Kobe said, you were the reason I did this. Exactly. So all of that should be pushed aside. But sister has to get to that point where she is ready herself to, you know, want to 
Forgive. Forgive and go back to church. And that's a process. You can't push nobody into doing that. No, forget about going back to church. You should have been there to support your sister. That's the thing I'm on. But the sister was at the church. So if, if uh, you know, if Megan was at the church, I'm sorry, Kobe was at the church. So if the sister had a problem with the church, she's not going there. And I, I totally understand that. Everybody has a process. And I think Kobe just has to understand that. And so next we're going to get on, oh, let's go with Taylor. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. You lie, and you was left with nothing. Left with nothing. <laughs> Went to prom, had fun in prom until a friend, you know, yeah. just kind of said, "Wait a minute, she's dating." Uh, yeah. What's the name, Demarcus? Yeah, it and, didn't go the way you thought it was gonna. Come I know, and then mm-hmm. Spencer kind of like, you know, oh, sit down and like, whoa, you got somebody else. Exactly. Exactly. I didn't expect him to leave like that and say, you know, let's just call it quits. I thought he'd be like, you know, this. Okay, so now I'm glad that she's going to take time to herself because when Spencer said he doesn't want to do this, she went to, what's his name, Demonic. Yes. And then he left. So right there it showed me that you're still, you're looking for someone you don't, you're afraid to be alone. So I'm glad you came to the conclusion that, okay, let me just find me. Forget the dating thing. I'm okay with finding me. And the thing is, she had to go back and talk with her parents too. Because, you know, it's just like your parents are going to be there for you. Your family going to be there. Thank God they're there for you. Right. And it's just and thank like, God my daddy told her the truth. Exactly. You tried to play both, and then this is what happened. This and her mom happened. said the same thing. And everybody else said that. Honest. You need you need to be honest. Yeah, you're young enough people's. to be honest on top of this. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Because those games you play when you're their age, trust me, when you get older, you just try to perfect those when mm-hmm. you get older. And it can blow up in your face. So it's a good thing she's by herself now. She can take our time, like she said, to figure out what God has for her life. And, you know, I think that would be, and like her mom said, you need to figure out what the will of God is for your life. And I think that, you know, hopefully <laughs> she'll do that for at least a couple hours because I don't see her <laughs> calming down at all. So uh, that that's Taylor right there. And also, let's get into Tori. It's time to party. Let me tell you, this girl, um, Tori, is just out of control. Uh, She went to the tattoo shop, tried to get that, you know, taken care of, met the people who were there at the tattoo, um, the the guys there, they were talking to her about some stuff, came out, rolled up a joint, and she was hitting that hard. I thought it was a cigarette at first. I know, I'm like, wow, yeah, I'm just like... I'm like, this is really raw television, raw reality. You think the preacher's daughter, they just have like little minor stuff. No, no, no. Like you said, break every chain. They are breaking every, everything that people would say, whoa, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do this. And it's Ooh. just, they, they have, I'm going to say push them on the low. They, they do it. Do it. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> but um, Tori is just the... Um, the one who is just going to be wild. I mean, no matter what. But I what. think her dad said it, and that's what I was thinking. You're trying to cover up your pain yeah. with drinking, with smoking, and with you, partying. Yeah. And you cannot. You have to address these issues. Because yeah. if not, they're going to stay with you no matter where you go. Exactly. You're going to have to try to appear hard when deep down you want to be soft. You want to be able to cry. You want to say, okay, exactly. I can't do this on my own. Yeah. But because of everything you're trying to hide and you've been hurt so much, now you're building up a wall. But when you build up a wall not to let anything out, nothing can get in either. Exactly. So oh, you just have to be strong enough to be vulnerable, wow. to receive help. It sounds like your heart is going. <laughs> <laughs> it is because I can tell. I can tell she's hurt. And that's where all the disrespect comes from mm. because you want to just shut them out so they can leave you alone so they won't see you cry. So it's more like, okay, just leave me alone. I'll do it. I'll be okay. Forget y'all. When in reality, you're not going to be okay. You want to be home. Yeah. You want to do right. And sometimes people think they've gone too far that they can't turn back. And yeah. yes, you can. Yeah. And I think with... You're uh, giving another chance every day. You know, dad and mom, they just come to their, you know, their, their, their end with her. Dad was kicking her out, had her clothes and everything, had a heart to heart with her. Like, and he was crying. Like crying. Because I think he's crying because he sees himself in her. And that's what anybody say, you know, you remind me of, you know, of me, a parent would say, or you remind me of somebody close in the family who went down that same road, kind of like with Megan, reminding of the brother who did the same thing. And when you see that, it's like, come on, man, we're going through the same thing again. It's like, do I have the strength to go through this again? I saw my addictions as the father. I'm sure he's saying it out. My, my child, my little baby has the same thing. 
And I, I just think for her too, I want her to get it together because it's not really a good look for the camera either. I mean, you're, you're, I keep going back to this and I don't want to do this because I know people are people, but the, the Pentecostal side of me is like, come on, your parents are preachers. You don't act like this. But the... <laughs> The wild side of you. The wild side, the humanistic side. The real side is like people are people. It doesn't matter what title their parents hold or what talent they have or what sometimes what title they have. People go through things and, you know, hopefully it leads them right. to. And it's not enough to just go through them. You have to grow through them. That's the whole thing. There you go. And I keep hearing people use the word, I'm making a mistake. No, sometimes you're making choices. And these choices yeah. can be avoided. Yeah. yeah. We cannot keep blaming things on a mistake. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Learn exactly. from your brother, from your parents. Every mistake doesn't have to be yours. But then sometimes people have to, you know, hear that whisper. If that doesn't work, they hear that the voice and then they hit the wall and say, hey, you got to turn around. You got to get on the right track. And hopefully for, you know, some of the girls in the show, they don't have to hit that wall that they just hear the voices that are telling them you go in the wrong way, turn around. And when they look at themselves now on television to see how they act, that you know they would say, you know what, something, something's got to yeah, give. Like I say, every mistake doesn't have to be yours. Every mistake does not have to learn be yours. from mine. Exactly. Yeah, that's what that's what I do. I learn from all of your mistakes. <laughs> 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 exactly. Exactly. Until next time, I'm your guy Dawson, and I'm Denise. Keep checking out Preacher's Daughter and, and us. And us definitely. And thank everybody who's coming, rated and subscribed. Till next time, peace. Cool.